Yes, you read the title correctly. Microsoft have done what tech YouTubers like me, Pangelo, and other people have been preaching for many years, and they've finally deep-loaded Windows and Windows 11. This has been out for a little while, but it was only recently brought to my attention, thanks to TechHut, who previously featured me, so I'm returning the favor, where they showcased an official version of Windows that you can download to take your Windows from looking like this, pre-installed with a ton of bloatware ads and things like that, to looking like this, which is a huge stark difference. Usually, Windows comes pre-installed with some useful features, and of course, for most people, just installing Windows and getting started works pretty well. There's an app store and things like that, but this version comes with none of that, absolutely no bloat. It's a bit more advanced in that you'll need to, instead of deleting everything you don't want, you'll need to reinstall what you do actually want. So for example, you'll need to reinstall the Microsoft Store, as otherwise it wouldn't be installed at all, which is great if you're a power user. That's really what this is focused on, and even though this would be pretty much a perfect distribution of Windows that comes with almost no bloatware and an improved installer, there is one major caveat, or maybe two of them, depending on who you are. For now though, let's actually see what this is and how it works. Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC 2024 is the latest release of the Windows 11 installation that comes with absolutely no bloatware. For the most part, LTSC means that these versions of Windows Windows get feature updates for quite a bit longer, as you can see a 10 year life cycle, which is pretty good. And of course it's focused more towards the internet of things, meaning that it's stripped down to have just the bare essentials, and as it's an enterprise thing, it'll usually be used on systems and endpoints on major companies where certain things will be pre-installed and managed by an IT professional, which is mainly what this is focused at, but you can download it and use it right now. In the description down below you'll find this page here where you can just download it by clicking this. Simply just save it and now a 4.1 gigabyte ISO is being downloaded. The official Windows 11 installation, if we choose it here, download now, choose a language, download, download, is around 5.4 gigabytes. As you can see here, there's quite a big size difference between them, and that's mainly the extra programs and things like that that have been stripped out for a much sleeker, lower RAM requiring installation with a lot less overhead, which is great. Once you have the ISO file downloaded, you can put it on a USB using Rufus, Ventoy, or you can install it on a virtual machine. But here's our first important caveat. This is a 90 day evaluation version. This is not a trial version of Windows, it's an evaluation version. So it'll only work for 90 days and then it'll just straight up not work anymore. You'll have an hour of usage and then it shuts down and the cycle repeats, which of course isn't the best. While you think you could work around this by activating it or sailing the seven seas, well, you can't actually activate this at all. Instead, you'll need to download the normal Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC ISO and not the evaluation version, which is completely different. Not to mention, of course, you'll need to get this from an official Windows IoT distributor, which you can find links for down below. From what I've seen on Reddit, it'll put you back somewhere around $80, which isn't crazy, but yeah. In order to actually use this thing, let's take this ISO file and actually load it up. So, in true Microsoft fashion, I'll spin up a Hyper-V virtual machine. So, new virtual machine, we'll give it a name, choose a place to store it, generation 2, we'll give it, say, 6 gigs of RAM, seems pretty good, and we'll choose to install from an ISO, which is right there. There we go, saving it, and checking out the settings for this. The other cool feature about this is that it doesn't actually need TPM in order to work properly. So, as you can see, TPM is currently turned off, which would be an issue if I was installing just plain old Windows 11 on a virtual machine or an older PC. This just works out of the box. That requirement is completely removed, and that's not even the coolest part. If we connect to this and boot from the CD, you'll see something even cooler. If we click through this, keyboard language, install, sounds good, except that's pretty much it. There's no TPM, there's no extra steps, it's just installing and shortly after, starting up pretty quickly. We're back to the usual Windows installer, though this time should be a bit quicker. So let's click through this, don't have internet, which also means I don't need to sign into a Microsoft account, give it a name, there we go, password, I'll skip, turn off all of the usual telemetry features, and shortly after, it sets up, and there we go, we're on Windows. There's nothing installed, just File Explorer, Settings, and Edge. That's pretty cool. Let's just quickly connect this thing to the internet, and of course, Settings, Windows Update, check for updates, 
And while that's happening, checking the Windows Task Manager over here, you can see we're currently running, well, not actually that much. There's of course a little bit more here than a couple of seconds ago as we are checking for Windows updates and downloading them, but there's really not that much going on here. Just a couple of services and this is pretty much all that's running. On the performance tab, memory, we're currently only using 2.9 gigs of RAM, 2.4, which is quite a bit less than a usual installation of Windows 11. I'll give you a picture here of what it usually looks like on a fresh install there. So that means, quite literally, you have more of your system available to do other things. We're waiting for this to finish, trying to get this screenshot on another virtual machine. Yeah, I didn't enable TPM and this is the issue you can get, which you don't get with LTSC. So forcibly enabling this, settings security, TPM on, there you go. Now I can install Windows here. And of course, they're forcing me to connect to the internet unless I do one of those workarounds. Here's a tech tip, shift F10, CD OOBE, bypass nro.cmd, and now we can skip this annoying step and of course, creating an account without a Microsoft account, which is great as we're not connected to the internet, telemetry, and the rest is about the same. Just of course, working around things is not what you should be doing. And there we go, while this looks clean right now, just wait until we connect to the internet. So there we go, connecting, yeah. And of course, there's even more downloading as we speak. There's a search bar with crazy icons. There's news, weather, man oh man, do I wish things were just clean. Also, task manager, on a completely fresh brand new install of Windows, there's quite a bit more running here. And of course, we're not even updating just yet. It might be in the background. Performance, memory, 2.8 gigs here. So we've actually used about 400 more than the LTSC machine that was also updating. So I'll let this update and check back in just a moment. So back on our normal Windows 11 install, straight out the box, 40% memory usage with a bunch of things running over here. RAM, as you can see, is around 2.2. But if we instead close out of this, back on our enterprise LTSC machine, task manager, 29% memory usage, and all the applications fit on one screen with just a handful of processes running in the background here. And checking the performance tab here, well, 1.6 gigs in use, which is what, probably half of the normal installation. You can actually get quite a bit of extra headroom by using something like this. Usually people will install something like Revision OS or another customized system, Atlas, etc. Those of course come from third parties where they modify your system in ways you don't understand. This comes straight from Microsoft themselves. But of course there is nothing here. There's only a search bar, there's no weather, there's no nothing, there's not even an app store at all. In order to actually get the Microsoft store installed, you'll need to run a simple command. Hit start, open up command prompt as administrator, yes, and inside of here, type in WS reset hyphen I as such, and this should reinstall the Microsoft Store. Now we just need to wait a little bit for this to actually work, as the Microsoft Store should be downloaded in the background. So there we go, the Microsoft Store has appeared in our processes, and there you go, it's actually installed. So now you can open up the store and install things as usual. So for example, Xbox, you can get the Xbox app here, which usually comes built in with Windows, for example. And of course, this should also install gaming services and things like that in the background. So Game Pass and stuff like that should also work. So open, yes, it might complain about things in just a moment. No, it seems to be just fine. After signing in, we should be able to just download games. Pretty cool. Of course, you can hit start, type in paint, for example, and you got the good old Microsoft Paint here, the good old calculator. Notepad is still the same old version. There's no Photos app, but in order to install the modern Photos app calculator and things like that, we'll need to reinstall the app installer, which usually comes with Windows, so we can install those things as well. This app installer, opening up Edge, is called Winget. Simply search for it, scroll down and choose the GitHub link, Microsoft slash Winget hyphen CLI. Scroll down here and you should eventually see this section over here, installing Microsoft Store recommended. Click the app installer link right here. This link should open up this page, install. It opens the Microsoft Store and we can get here. If you search for app installer, it's not actually gonna come up, which is a little bit weird. But once this is done, we can start installing apps using Winget. 
So start an either PowerShell or CMD and run this as admin. Inside of here, you can type in winget and this new command works. To install something like the Photos app, you'll need to use winget install, followed by a confusing bit of code. This, for example, is to install the Photos app. So if we run it, agree, yes, it'll download and install this. And as soon as it's done, we should now have the Photos app installed as you would expect. It works just fine. However, of course, finding those commands is very difficult. There's a bunch of different sources, but you'll find most of the important ones in the description down below for copy and paste ease. But you can use Winget for quite a bit more. If you use a website such as winstall.app, winstall.app, you can find a ton of different apps on the Winget store here. So Windows Terminal, you can install things like Discord, OBS, Spotify, all from your command line. And some of them have names that are much more English. So for example, Microsoft Windows Terminal. If we copy this and run it, it'll install the new terminal that usually comes installed with Windows 11. So just like that, it's installed and there it is, of course, as you'd expect. Now, while this is all well and good, some things like the Xbox Game Bar used for a couple of different game features and the Xbox app features, you simply can't find on the Microsoft Store here. So Xbox Game Bar, nothing useful shows up and Winget, nothing shows up here, couldn't find any apps. Now, while this is all fun and good, the Windows installation doesn't last past 90 days, unless of course, you were to of course, purchase an official version. It's great, it's not exactly a usual mainline installation of Windows 10 or 11, so that is super annoying. That being said, it is possible for Microsoft to do something like this, a stripped down, much better installation of Windows off the bat, but of course, you need to be quite a nerd to get the most out of it. If you're interested, you'll find the links down below while this would be great for most people, I definitely recommend not installing this and following along with a whole bunch of steps to get it gaming ready, such as reinstalling the Xbox Game Bar, which can be quite a bit of effort, as a lot of these packages can't just be reinstalled with a command as the packages themselves are missing from the Windows installation. That's the extra gigabyte or so that's missing from the ISO itself. So yeah, while it's good for a lot of things to have a much skinnier deep load of Windows, it is going to be quite difficult to get it back to a usable state if you're someone who uses a lot of the normal built-in things with Windows, in which case stripping down an installation might be better than building one up from scratch. But anyways, that's really it for this quick video. Hopefully you found it interesting. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.